Welcome back to 630 Point of View. Tonight in the hot box, the president of the Fargo School Board, Jim Johnson. Jim, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Chris. You saw what I just shared about gun laws versus, hey, is there a possibility of having our teachers in the public schools here in Fargo packing heat? Your comments on that? I mean, if you look at research, it shows that, hey, this might be the safer, more secure way to go. Well, I haven't seen research that says arming our teachers are going to stop the violence. Um, I'm hopeful that we as a community, we as a country, uh, give serious thought to what actually could stop this type of behavior from repeating itself. Um, and, and if, in fact, arming more people in our schools is a solution, then it's one we should at least look at the efficacy of. Uh, in North Dakota, of course, we have laws that prohibit that today. Um, I suspect there are a lot of emotions running the full gamut from let's get rid of weapons to let's arm everybody. Uh, part of me, and I'm by no means an expert, uh, I kind of think weapons aren't the issue. It's the people that might end up with them. Um, so I'm hoping we have serious dialogue, serious discussions about what we can do to change the culture and behavior that can lead to this type of event from occurring. Um, and at the end of the day, whatever strong solutions that look like they, they make sense, uh, I think communities across the nation will embrace So you bring up a good point, because you said, hey, look, it's not necessarily about the weapons, it's about whose hands may end up on these weapons. So mm -hmm. the thing with the situation that in Texas that you just saw, I mean, it's not just any teacher that gets that. They go through very extensive background checks, psychological exams, with those kind of hoops to jump through, and you just said this yourself, hey, it's not about the weapons, would you be okay then if there was a teacher who said, you know what, I want to be sure I've got a gun in my classroom? Um, you know, again, I, I, I'm going to wait to see data. I, I'm not going to jump to an, a conclusion. First of all, I, I haven't heard teachers saying they want to be the security force as well as the education force. Uh, they already have a pretty full plate. Uh, in Fargo and in many communities, luckily we have a very, very responsive police department. Uh, we have what we call our SRO officers, our school resource officers. They obviously are armed. Uh, part of me thinks that's probably a better long-term solution, um, but that in and of itself doesn't guarantee that you can end this type of behavior. Uh, you know, I, obviously every life that can be saved is worth saving. Uh, so I, I hope the dialogue go, goes deep, uh, looks at all of the issues, not just gun control issues, although I think those should be looked at as well. Uh, both the advocacy of more guns and less guns, but it's the culture. Um, it, it's the, the desperation that I believe many of these mass murderers feel uh, that drive them to this. And I think part of it is the media that ends up glamorizing these people. You, you mentioned uh, about, hey, SROs, you look at Red Lake Falls, I think it was maybe five, seven years ago, yep. he shot an armed guard at that school. Let's yep. move on to, I think, let's give some parents some certainty tonight. What is the protocol? Gentleman shows up, they're inside a school building here in Fargo, armed with a gun. What's the protocol that's in place now to ensure that these teachers and kids are safe? Well, we do a lot, and not just because of this event last week, this tragedy, um, really for decades now. Um, there is a community response made up of law enforcement, our education team. Uh, each and every one of our buildings actually has nine mandatory drills they run per year. Three of them are really what we call lockdown drills. Uh, the very thing that took place in Connecticut that minimized the, the horrible act to, to one classroom, so it couldn't go from classroom to classroom. Uh, so that gets practiced three times a year. Uh, we do uh, evacuation drills three times a year uh, for different types of issues, obviously. And uh, then what we call shelter drills, uh, obviously for tornadoes and those type of things. So part of it is just having our students and staff prepared for all the contingencies that can come at, at us. Uh, the SROs are, are just critical from the safety perspective of our schools. Uh, and over the years, we've been fortunate enough through partnering with Fargo Police Department to expand that to all of our secondary buildings and, and with an assigned officer responsible for connection to each elementary building. Uh, my guess is, and it's just a guess, as this dialogue unfolds, uh, I think we'll see more resources put into the public police departments to provide that safety and security to the public institutions. Um, but it's a very difficult road that you're looking at. Um, 
you know, you can lock buildings. We have lockdown procedures. People have to sign in. They have to have a name badge. Uh, that's all in place. It was all in place in Connecticut. Uh, a person with the right type of a weapon is going to blow through whatever lock you have, uh, potentially be shooting at whatever security people you have. Um, and that's why I think we really have to start to address the root cause. What do you think least, that is specifically? Well, you know, I think it's a combination of things, and I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a professional in this area. I, I think as I look at the profiles of mass murder people, at least that I get to see, uh, that we all get to see in the media, uh, they tend to be people that have sheltered into themselves. Uh, they don't have a strong support network of friends and family. Uh, loner, I guess, would be the term. Um, oftentimes they are fighting mental illnesses mm -hmm. of different types um, and perhaps in, in some circumstances they were the victim earlier in life of behaviors that, I think. that caused them to internalize. Um, I, I think it starts with us recognizing, number one, that mental illness is real illness. I, I think that's a huge hurdle for this country still a and putting the resources to work there. Um, Jim, I don't want to interrupt you here, but one of the fun things about this show is that we obviously get a lot of feedback from you, the audience. I posed this question earlier on our Facebook page, but hey, should teachers be armed inside the classroom? We got some great comments from you. We're going to get to those with the president of the Fargo School Board, Jim Johnson, when we come back. And again, join our conversation here. Go to our website, 630pov.com. Welcome back to the Hot Box on 630 Point of View. With me tonight, the president of the Fargo School Board, Jim Johnson. One of the fun things about this show is we get a chance to hear from you and then pose your comments and questions to our experts, our guests. And so I want to start with Gina's comment on our Facebook page from earlier today. Again, I asked, hey, should guns be allowed? Should teachers have those in the classroom? Good idea or bad idea? Gina said this, what would stop a kid from figuring out where the teacher keeps the gun and carrying out a school shooting themselves? Above all, it's not a teacher's responsibility to be armed and ready to shoot. Well, well, again, I, I think good questions or, or comments on her part. Um, I think one of the factors that certainly will be studied is bringing more weaponry in the school. Is that going to make it safer, or does it present different problems? Um, and again, I, I'm not going to presume that teachers want this job. Um, I agree. Uh, obviously, people uh, have signed up in law enforcement to serve and protect. <laughs> They're trained. This is their avocation and their passion. Um, and of course, we have people in the buildings besides teachers. We have lots of staff. So as the dialogue goes forward, I think we need to listen to what our educators feel their role is, listen to the police uh, force of folks and, and what they believe the best procedures are going to be and take that and then implement, if changes need be, those changes. And of course in North Dakota, none of that could happen outside of police officers in our building without state statutes being changed. Want to get to a comment from Nick as well. Nick has this to say, so let the criminals have guns but not the good citizens to protect our children. You all have lost your DAMN minds. Criminals don't follow law, so all of you against protecting the innocent, move to Canada and bury your heads in the snow. You don't deserve to be Americans. You are the problem with this country and what has made it weak. Some strong comments. Your comments on that. All right. All right. Obviously a little anger there. Um, I, I'm not really sure what his premise is that, you know, uh, obviously there are people that have opinions on both sides of a gun issue. I understand it's a passionate thing. I'm a bird hunter, so I like shotguns at least. Um, but the idea that, uh, you know, that, I guess if we think it's a good idea to arm a teacher, somebody's going to say, well, should the 18-year-old that goes to school have a gun to them? Um, you know, so I, I, again, I just think let the emotions settle down. Let, let the healing begin for the families and the loved ones uh, out in Connecticut. And then let's our best thinking with our best professionals. Uh, develop what they think are the strategies that could help mitigate this in the future. Another comment here from our Facebook page from Reed. Uh, Reed says, this seems a little silly and excessive, meaning having teachers with guns. When we get scared, we think things we normally wouldn't think. Also, I agree with the person who commented earlier saying teachers have enough to worry about, higher security if we think it's that dangerous, and don't complain if you have to pay a cent or two more for your taxes every year if you're the one who wants guns in schools. Yeah, well, I, again, I think... Uh, Good thoughts. Um, 
uh, trained professionals are, are truly the people that should be providing security. And that doesn't mean we can't train uh, normal education staff to be trained security officers, uh, but that's not what they signed up to be when right. they went to college. Um, I, I think there will be a lot of discussion, and Fargo's fortunate. We, we've partnered well with the Fargo Police Department, but there are a whole lot of schools that don't have SRO officers in the nation in our region. Um, and, and, you know, I think we sometimes fool ourselves. We, we live out here in the Midwest where we, we have this notion that somehow these things aren't going to come knocking on our door. Uh, I think our role as a school board and as a school district are, are to plan for all the possibilities and develop the best strategies we can. I agree. Last comment here I want to get to. We may have time to have you comment. But Reno says this. As I say, arm them all, including the students. I mean, really. It would also stop bullying, too, or abusive teachers, etc. Instead of a football game or basketball game, let's just have a weekly shoot-up party and get rid of the surplus population. I mean, why not? we got crazy gun law, CRAP going on. We might as well have car bans, knife bans, and all that, too. How many of you blamed a drunk driver's car for killing and so forth and so forth and not the drunk? Nothing will be solved until we hit the heart of the issue, which is the mental health issues and policy. And I think that's pretty much essentially what you were saying is, look, we've got to look at this thing from a much bigger perspective than simply just gun control laws. And again, you look at the research, uh, it shows here that all these shootings take place typically in gun free zones. Jim, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks we need a quick me. prediction from you. Stanford or Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl? I, I think Stanford will win the Rose Bowl. I think Northwestern's going to probably take the Gator Bowl. <laughs> and I think the Bison will repeat as national champions. We're going to have you back to talk about this blue stem scenario in the near future as well. Coming up, had some great voicemail comments from you and also some emails. We're going to get to those in just a moment. Again, I want to invite you to join our conversation here on the show. Go to 630pov.com. Stay close. Lots more coming up. For 12 days of Christmas.